Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the second birth story that I am gonna tell you. A couple weeks ago, I told you the birth story of my firstborn, Isabel. That happened 2017, she's now four years old and now I'm gonna give you my birth story for my second born who is now a year and a half. So this happened 2019. I am still very much pregnant with our third and this is not the birth story for that. I have not had baby. Don't worry, I will let you know when that happens, but I did want to share my second baby's home birth story because it was so different than my firstborn. This one was a home birth, and I chose to do that because I did not have a great hospital experience with my first. My labor was quick, it just was not a great experience. I didn't like the way the nurses treated me. Like I just, I didn't have a great experience. So I chose to have a home birth the second time around with a midwife. And I was too scared to do that with my first one because I had, you know, I was first baby, had no idea how things were gonna go. But since I was able to have an unmedicated natural birth pretty much by myself with my first, I was pretty confident I was gonna be able to do it just fine at home. So let's see where to start. I was late with Juliana, which surprised the heck out of me because people always told me that with your first baby, you went late and then it gets, you know, sooner with each baby from there. So Isabella had two days early. So I was expecting at the very minimum, I would have the second baby two days early or maybe go to due date, but like not much later than that. And then Juliana ended up going eight days late. So a week plus eight days late. And so by that point, I was like so ready to have baby. I was scared because at 42 weeks, you could test out of home birth and might have to like go in. So I was like, this is gonna ruin everything. Like, of course this is happening. Like what else can we do? I was trying all the things. So Wednesday, the day before I had her on a Wednesday, I went to the chiropractor in the morning to get an adjustment, make sure everything was lined correctly. He did a couple of like ear reflexology points to try to get things moving. And then later that afternoon, I had a reflexology and massage planned at this place. It was amazing, <laughs> would highly recommend doing one of those. Um, but when there, it was like two or three hours long, that appointment. And when there, um, they were telling me like, okay, you are late, like if you wanna get things moving, here are some things we suggest. And the only thing on their list that I had not tried to that point was nipple stimulation. So that night, I, got my pump out and I just did a little bit of like pumping on each side for like two minutes um, on a low setting just to like see if that stimulated anything. And literally while I was doing that, my first contraction happened. I was like, whew, okay, this is working. So that night, um, contractions, once they started, they didn't go away. They were still really far. I knew it wasn't gonna happen that night and that we'd go, you know, it would probably be the next day, but at least they had started. And since, if you saw my other birth story, Isabel came super fast. Once labor started, like actual active labor, um, once that started, it was like two hours until Juliana was born. So, I had no idea since they say your second goes a little bit faster. I had no idea like how fast this labor was going to go, had no clue. So my midwife was like, you know, just tell me when it starts so that I can be prepared because she lives about a half hour from me. So she wanted to make sure that like she could get to me. So the next morning I texted her just saying, hey, like labor has started. It is not, not near. It's not time yet, but just letting you know that it started. However, she wanted to kind of come pretty soon because, you know, she had no idea how fast it was going to go. So she got to my house probably by like 9am I'd say, and, you know, just checked baby's heartbeat, checked, like asked me some questions, like how far away contractions were or whatever. She was like, okay, well, we're not there yet. Like, do you want me to go and, you know, sit at a Panera or something and like let me know when things come back or do you just want me to stay here like what do you want me to do um I was like you know like don't go out like you're welcome to stay here so um she stayed here and she called the assistants like got them on call and then we pretty much just had like a normal morning not normal because obviously we knew labor was starting I took off work I called off work um you know so that was Thursday um and Dan and I, we put Isabel in a little wagon. We just tried to enjoy our morning with her because obviously it was gonna be our last with just her. 
So we put her in a wagon and we walked down our street and there's like this little hill where she loved to play and like build rocks and build campfires and we did that and it was a nice day it was in september so it was like a beautiful fall day it was just so nice the sun was shining like i can remember that morning so nicely like it was just such a perfect morning contractions are happening but nothing i can't handle i can talk through them i can walk through them um i'm still noticing them but they're you know it's nothing like crazy at that point when we got back, I thought it would be nice to have like a little tea party. We had like the midwife here and so I wanted to make something um, so that she didn't feel as bad just being there. So I made scones, we had some tea, we, so we had basically a mini tea party. Isabel really enjoyed that. Um, I think the some of the assistants were here by that time, so they enjoyed that. We all had like a nice time. And my midwife was like, you're one of these, you're one of those that just has to keep moving until, you know, you physically can't. I was like, yeah, I don't like to relax. You know, I just like to be on the move, like distract myself. If I'm thinking about a contraction, it hurts more. So I'd rather just distract myself. I will say it did like feel a little bit weird to have people in my house. I will definitely call later. Next time we'll all inform her, but tell her to come later next time when I know things are like really moving. Cause it did feel like I was almost entertaining at one point, like had to make sure they were okay as well. Or if like I wanted to have a painful contraction, then like I would go outside or something. Like it was like one of those things like, but they were watching me without saying anything. Like when I was cooking, I remember having a contraction, like breathing through it at the counter and they didn't say anything. They just let me go on with my business. But like 20 minutes later, they were like, okay, your contractions are like six minutes six minutes apart at this point. I was like, really, how do you know? She's like, well, we record it every time you have one. I was like, well, how do you know I have one? They're like, well, we're watching you. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, just like, oh, okay, well, all right. So my midwife was like, you know, well, maybe things aren't progressing because you have Isabel here. Like, do you want her to go? I was like, no, I don't want her to go yet. Like, I want her here until like, I don't want her here. So. That wasn't at that point what I wanted, but she was like, why don't you just go rest? Like, why don't you go lay down and see if that helps? So I went and laid down. I don't like laying down. As soon as I laid down, contractions like completely stopped. They went from being like five minutes to 20 minutes. And I just like, for me, relaxation in labor is not what I like. I just, I like to be moving. So after that, after like 45 minutes of trying to rest and take a nap and I had one contraction, I was like, nope, can't do this, it's stalling labor. So I like got up and started walking and as soon as I started walking, contractions were like three minutes apart. So I was like, yeah, I just need to keep moving, keep moving. It's probably about noon at this point and I was like, okay, like I'm ready. Like I called my dad and was like, hey, it's labor day. Can you come pick up Isabel? I just, um, you know, I'm ready to have baby soon and so we need someone to watch her. So my dad came and picked up Isabel. It was like noon, like maybe 12, 15 or something like that when he left. So he picked her up, they had a great day. They went to Gameworks, they had like a fantastic day. Isabel still talks about that to this day and is so excited for this baby to come because she thinks she gets to do that all over again. Knowing my dad, they might do that all over again. But anyway, I kept walking at that point. I had two songs that I was like obsessed with. So I would just walk our street and listen to these same two songs over and over. Contractions were like two minutes apart at that point. And I was like, yeah, I think I'm ready to like go inside. It's probably like one at this point, I guess. I don't know exactly what time it was. Um, you know, with my first, I had an app. I was tracking everything. This time I had midwives and they were doing it. So I didn't like, I don't have like a sense of time really. But I would guess um, since my dad took her around noon, 12, 15, that I would guess it'd be about one at this point. And I got to the point where I was like, I can't walk through these anymore. I need like to be in the zone. So Dan and I went upstairs into my room. The midwives like just let us go, let us be alone, have our own private space. Like they were listening, but did not bother us, did not say anything, like just let us be. So we went up there and it was probably like close to two that I was like pacing. I was like, I can't do this. I don't want to do this anymore. You know, like you're going through transition at that point and you shift from like, this sucks to I can't do it anymore. I don't want to be here. I, I don't want to do it. Like, I don't want to have this baby. You know, like those feelings of like, you just can't and you want to throw up and you want to like, it's just transition sucks. It's awful. I didn't want to listen to music. I didn't want to talk to him. I didn't want him to help me. I did want him to help me. I wanted to go to the bathroom. I didn't want to go to the bathroom. And for me, like I'm so type A, like if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know, I'm type A, you know, messes like bother me. 
Um, it's just my personality. And so even when in labor, it was like, I would want to go to the bathroom and sit on the toilet because if I wanted to like relax and have pee come out, I wanted to do that on the toilet. So it didn't make a mess, which doesn't really make sense. Like midwives have everything set up for you. Like you have pee pads around, like I wouldn't have made a mess and they would have cleaned it up even if I did. But that's just how I am. It's just like, I want it to be where you go when you pee. Like I want it to be on the toilet. So I'm in the bathroom. My midwife comes upstairs and she's like, you know, let's just check on baby. Let's check the heartbeat. So she did, which she had done a couple times, like since being here, you know, they just every once in a while, you know, check, make sure baby's heartbeat still sounds good. Um, and so I let her check and then I went, um, I was like, I, I can't do it anymore. She was like, I know that's how you feel. Like, you know, let's just, I'll be here. So she stayed with me like from that time on. She knew, I mean, they were sitting in the stairwell when I was in my bedroom. Like they knew it was getting close. They could hear me like they're professionals. They know what's going on. So they were really close by. But I remember like being in the bathroom. It's probably, you know, 2.15 at this point. And I was like, I can't do it anymore. I'm exhausted. She was like, okay, when a contraction comes, like you gotta breathe through it. Don't hold your breath. You gotta just let it come, take it in. And I was like, oh, like, oh my gosh, why? And to be honest, like active labor this time around, it was way harder than I remembered it being with Isabel. I'm sure it was like the same, but to me, it just seemed like I was so unprepared. Like I thought I made it through the first time. Second one's gonna be breezy. You know, they always say they come easier and I was not mentally prepared. And so for me, it was a lot harder. I remember at one time as I'm pushing, screaming for what felt like two minutes straight. Like I didn't even think I could let air out that long. So it must not have really been that long, but it felt like that long. And I remember thinking like, thank God Isabel is away because that would have really scared her. Cause for a little while I actually thought about letting her like witness the birth, <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm glad I didn't. I, I remember thinking like that would have scared her. I've never imagined a sound like that could come from me. Like, whoa, that was crazy. But after that, that was like, you know, ring of fire, baby was coming like as I was like making those sounds and baby came on a birthing stool in my bathroom and you know, the midwife like kind of caught her and to be honest, when she came out, I was so just like trembling, exhausted, going through so many emotions with how hard it was. I like, my first thought when she came out was like, I don't know if I wanna hold her right now. Like I, it felt like the worst feeling as a mother to think that way. But like, I was so just like in awe, like of what was happening to my body was just so exhausted and tired that like, I, I just didn't even think I had the energy to like hold her, but I must have made instinctively the motion to put my hands down to hold her because I remember my midwife putting her in my arms and then being like, well, I guess I'm holding her and like putting her close. Then Miss Little, little Miss Juliana Joanne was in my arms. It was 2.37 when she was born, I think. She came out seven pounds, 10 ounces, and she was 19 and a half inches long. So she was over a pound more than Isabel was, but she was, you know, cooking 10 days longer than Isabel did too. So she had some time to put on some extra weight. And all in all, so my dad took her around, Isabel around 12-ish, which is when contractions started getting like more tough. And then I had her at two to 37. So that's probably like an hour and a half to two hours of really hard active labor because after my dad took her, I was still able to walk outside for a bit. So um, again, once it like hit that point to where I couldn't move, labor like progressed pretty quickly, like all in all. And considering, you know, with my firstborn, contractions started the night before and with Juliana, the contractions started the night before, considering contractions started around the same time, I actually had Juliana much quicker because she was born at 2.30 and Isabel was born at 8.15. So that's like almost six hours difference, a shorter labor in total than with Isabel. But anyway, um, so after she was born, had her on me and um, they walked me to my bed and I still had not delivered the placenta yet at that point. So I had her with her cord and um, we didn't cut yet at that point. So I was in bed waiting for the placenta to come. And then once the placenta was delivered, Dan cut the cord. Um, 
and that was really special. We got to look at the placenta, which was a cool experience as well. The aftercare was so amazing. Like they just left me with Juliana and Dan and we just bonded with baby. Worked on nursing, like they did not bug us. I mean, she was checking my like making sure I was okay and like doing all that, but they didn't rush to do the newborn procedures or, you know, tests. Um, they went and they cleaned everything up. They cleaned my bathroom. They started laundry. They, you know, cleaned our house. Like they just did everything. And then, you know, eventually they came up, like asked how breastfeeding was going, um, checked her for ties, which she did have. Um, and so did my firstborn. So that's not surprising. Um, she weighed her, she, you know, measured her, did all those things. And then Isabel, I had my dad bring her back cause I was just so excited for Isabel to meet Juliana. Doing it again, I won't have them come back so fast. I definitely wish we would have had help in those first couple hours, like my dad still had Isabel, cause, so that was like a bad choice on my part, but I was just so excited for Isabel to meet her, cause Isabel was so excited, I was just so excited I wanted to meet her. So that was so, so cute and so special. And then not long after, like the midwives, they took their leave and they were gonna do some of the you know testing that they have to do like at the 48 hour visit rather than like that day. So that was super nice. We got to like sleep uninterrupted. No one was yelling at me. It was just all in all an amazing, amazing experience. The only thing I would change for this next baby is not calling them as early so that they weren't just like sitting around. Um, so I would definitely wait until things were like a little bit <laughs> more on the way before I invite them over. But other than that, it was just the most calmed, relaxing. I could eat when I want, I could move when I want, I could cry when I wanted. Like I just like was able to have the birth that I wanted. All in all, like it was just such an amazing experience. I, if you're considering it, I would highly recommend it. Just make sure you have a midwife that like you are completely comfortable with and who is trained and all those good things and have a backup plan in case something does go wrong but all in all it was a great great birth that little sweet little juliana um is just so so special and welcoming her into our family of then four as we had um was just so 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 special so that is my second birth story of my second born little juliana and um I will hopefully be sharing my next birth story in the next month and a half or so. If you have had a home birth, I would love to hear about it in the comments. If you've thought about it, I'd love to hear it in the comments. And if you are like, girl, uh-uh, I would never do a home birth, like put that down there too, because that's completely fine. We all have our preferences when it comes to birthing. So whatever you choose to do or whatever your hope is, is also completely fine. So that's just my story and what I chose. Um, I'd love to hear your experience as well. All right. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.